everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to cleaner, greener, conscious, that's a new one, beauty, skincare, and more. I try products out for you and share my honest reviews so you know whether to buy or more importantly, not to buy. And today I am reviewing the Erin's Faces Mineral Liquid Powder Foundation SPF 15. It is supposed to be a medium coverage foundation that's supposed to hydrate where you're dry and absorb oil where you're shiny, like it knows what to do on your face, evidently. It gives a soft matte finish and is supposed to look like skin, not makeup, all for $40. I really like the last claim, by the way. That's my kind of claim. So does it follow through? Well, let's find out. Stick around and here we go. FYI, I purchased this puppy. So you are getting my honest review here. No one's paying me to say the following. If you enjoy getting my honest reviews, then take a minute to like and subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot and I thank you for your support. I am going to go quickly through this one. I'm gonna move through the pros, the cons, a demo of the before and after, and of course my final verdict, plus any product recommendations if they come up. The full scorecard is going to be back on the website. Without further ado, let's hit those pros, shall we? First pro, there are a nice amount of shades available here. Is it 40? No, but it's 11 and for a smaller business, I'm very happy and pleased to see anything above like a five and a six, sometimes above a two. Another pro, this is a very silky, lightweight formula. There is a con involved in that for a personal call out on ingredients, but I'll get to that in a second. I really love that kind of texture. Usually, however, means there's silicones in it, which there are. I'll touch on that in a second. Um, it really depends on your skin and how your skin reacts. Personal thing, but I like the texture and it feels very lightweight it does not feel heavy. A little bit goes a very long way. I do think that it followed through on the medium coverage. You can do light with very small amounts on the face. It blends well with other products on the face upon application. Faces foundation held up very nicely. Let's do a close up. There you go. Take into the account that my skin was really, really dry and I thought it was going to hold on to any dry patches, like I thought it was gonna crease. It did not. Coverage is actually still pretty great. There is a more velvety finish that tones down shine, so if you really don't like that or you wanna minimize the shine on maybe a more oily skin type, this can do that, but it doesn't look dry. It doesn't look like your skin's starved for moisture. Like some of those, you know, seriously matte foundations out there can kind of give that effect. You're not gonna get that here. In terms of using it as a concealer if you need to, yeah, you totally could and I did. Did it look brightening? No, it's not brightening. I mean, it's a shade to match this area of the face, not brighten the under eye, of course. They're not claiming it to do that. However, I did actually like it as a lid primer, so it evened out the lid and made it a little bit more of an even canvas. Again, a very small amount or else it would crease, but just kind of a bonus tip. And the coverage that I mentioned, the medium coverage, it really did even out the redness. Plus there's no scent here, so I'm very happy about that. Now let's move on to the cons. <laughs> The one thing that I did see here upon application, if there was any dry patchiness or, you know, maybe there was like a little bump here or there, it would separate a bit around it and create a bit of texture. It wasn't that feathering on top as much, although that was a little bit there. I resolved that with a sponge to apply it. When I used the Kabuki brush or just my hands, it was good, but it would grab onto the patchiness a little bit. So a damp beauty sponge really was needed for me to get more of a flawless look, which got better throughout the day. I wanted to add that, but I don't wanna wait all day, you know? I have combination skin. It looked like I was wearing foundation when I just used this. So I found myself mixing this with, again, some type of a moisturizer and oil. Not necessarily a bad thing, but I wouldn't say that my skin always looked like skin. I was going for that, and that was one of the claims. I didn't get that melt in effect immediately. Again, once the natural oils of my skin released, it kind of did its thing. The last con is also a little bit personal, but for those of you that are looking to avoid silicones, it's a potential con. Uh, I'm not gonna villainize silicones. I am not a cosmetic chemist, never claimed to be. And bottom line is there's no regulated term for clean and green beauty out there. I fully understand that. I just wanna find products that are better for my skin and my lifestyle. That's the point. There's dimethicone in here. My skin personally does not like it. Now, why, how do you know that? Why do you, well, how can you actually say that? Really, can you say it? I've had that question. That's why I'm saying it. Uh, yeah, I do know why. Because every now and then if my skin's breaking out, 
out. I have a Beyond the Bottle journal that I do. It's a holistic skincare journal and I track it and I watch for patterns. And every time I have something with dimethicone pew, and I use it consistently, all of a sudden you start seeing these little red dots. They're not pimples, it's not acne, but it's irritation. So I try to avoid products with that in there. And I'm just kind of bummed, like I hate seeing it higher up on the list, but now I know why that texture is what it is. So my final verdict here, would I buy this again? <laughs> Probably not because of the dimethicone and because I know it would irritate my skin. So no, it's not a must have for me. If you're open to the formula, if you want a fuller coverage, it's not going to be heavy and it's not going to be dewy. If you are still curious about other products out there like this that give this kind of a look, then I would absolutely recommend the following. These are not necessarily favorites, but I'm recommending that you check them out so they weren't complete fails <laughs> at all. And I'll link to reviews so you can check out the reviews as well. But initially when I tried this, it reminded me so much of the Clove and Hallow liquid skin tint, which was really such a cool product. Again, it had, I think an, uh, an ingredient issue that was an issue for my skin, but I really liked the finish that I saw there. And it's $26, I believe. So take a look at that. Another option that's really Really lightweight but gives very solid coverage without settling in or looking too matte and dry is the Han CC serum. I think it's a CCC serum or CC serum. Check that out as well. It's a very cool product. Very different vibe in terms of texture but you'll see that in that video. And then the last which I really initially wasn't crazy about but it is a good product for coverage and it has that slicker sense to it without giving too much sheen is the Bite Change Maker Foundation. The formula is not the best there. I'm just putting it out there. I said it in the review, but some people watching aren't strictly into like must have specific ingredients. So I wanna give you that as an option if you wanna look at it. If not, pass. And there you have it. If you're curious about my all time favorites, the ones that I would buy again and again, you can always check out the Brits Picks or you can check out the favorites list on the channel. I post favorites videos every now and then, so you can just kind of check out archives there. Oh my gosh, did I even tell you I got this in natural beige? Sorry, <laughs> I'm ahead of myself. What else is right, new? That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this review helpful, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate your support as always, and I'm gonna go put this away and try some more stuff out for you. I will see you right back here real soon. Until then, uh, bye. bye want to know what I'm wearing because sometimes you do so I'm gonna tell you those who want to know Aether amethyst eyeshadow palette um, the Aether self-love lip cream which I think they had a production issue hashtag COVID really a good color and I hope they get that fixed oh. and then cloven hallow I have the lip velvet in darling just got this it's pretty much the same color as my actual lip which is kind of amazing Really good shade match, thanks, Britt. You're welcome, Britt. Okay, bye. It's hoodie season. <laughs> That's my favorite. It's my favorite season in the world.